All right. So this philanthropist, or a very, he was a very wealthy man. Um, he wasn't much educated, but he had learnt. And um, he was in charge. He had a timber processing company. He actually exported um, timber from Ghana and other places to London and the US. He actually opened uh, a shop in the US. He actually hired a ship by himself to send timber over to US and London. And so he was much exposed. And um, when he, he came back, he saw how his people were treated by the Europeans. And so he was ready to push for a political party that would get rid of the Europeans from his country. What year was that? You said. You said what year was that? Yes, that was around um, 1943. Okay. Yes, but he was doing this thing. So later on, in 1947, uh, the first political party was formed, and in August, there was the United Gold Coast Convention. He financed it, and at that time, it was made up of five people. Um, these five people were made up of um, lawyers, um, educationalists, and also businessmen. And when they formed it, they realized that they need to advance this course. Their motto for the party was called self-governance in the shortest possible time. And so in December, um, one of them, um, or before December, one of them was called um, Aku Ejei said that because we need to push this thing and because the five of us are also engaged in other things we need somebody who would be the mouthpiece of the party so they had to look for someone and then Kroma, Kwame Nkrumah was recommended that time Kwame Nkrumah was in Lincoln and had also moved to London and so they said that they would have at that time Kwame Nkrumah couldn't get they didn't have money and wasn't working and he couldn't come back so if they were willing to pay for his um, ship fare to come back to Ghana he would and if he would be paid during working so Park Grant financed uh, the return of Kwame Nkrumah to become the secretary and at that time he was paid the, the fare for the ship to bring him was about 100 pounds and roughly he was being paid 150 pounds at the end of the month. And so the first political party was formed. But later on, there was a strong um, misunderstanding between um, the founder of the party, who was called JB Dankwa, and Kwame Nkrumah. So Kwame Nkrumah had to break away to form his own political party, which was called the Convention People's Party, CPP. So at this point, um, take a break. And then uh, we'll continue because when we get to some places, um, I will be showing you some more things and we'll tell you more things. Okay. All right, if questions, anybody has questions, you can ask based on what we've spoken about so far. And if there are no questions, okay. Yes. What is the people's thoughts of the president wanting to push for those, the youth to be taught French? The president's push? Yeah, he's, yeah. Okay. So the push is not only for this president. Other presidents who have come before him have actually pushed for um, French to be um, something that should be taught. And actually, it's been taught. Um, from um, junior high school, um, everybody takes French. And then when you get to senior high school, it's an option where you choose if you want to further on do French. But the, the government is trying to do a new curriculum. You know, I was telling you yesterday that we had 10 subjects which are trying to bring down to seven. So they would have one that would be those who would be doing French throughout their senior high school all throughout, and even junior high school all throughout, so that it would push for people to, to learn French. So there's been something that we've been talking about and people have been pushing about to learn French. We also have French schools for people who also want to further on take French classes. And learn that we have a French school called Alliance Francais, the very popular school here, and people go there to upgrade and to learn French. So it's very because why because of our neighboring cultural borders, we can't we can't we can't because if we want to influence, one of the thing is um, economy wise, um, our neighboring countries are those we want to get in touch with and sell 
and cross, you know, share and all that. So it's one of the things that um, is, is being pushed for because there are people, there are even here in Ghana, there are young people who actually set up companies in Togo and Cote d'Ivoire. And so they need to, to get the French going. So, yeah. One last yeah. Is there a, a local language that the surrounding countries also speak that, an African language? There is no African language. There's no African language. No. Everybody speaks. Everybody speaks. Yeah, indigenous and different tribes. Different tribes. No, African no. no African language. No. You know, Africa is big. There's no one language in Africa. There's no one language in Africa. No. Is there is there a common dialect that's spoken right, in that's, Ghana, yeah. in Togo, in Benin? Not at all. So that they can communicate so, outside of French and English. No, so, it doesn't exist. No, it doesn't exist. No, it doesn't exist. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. What I said earlier on. There are ethnic groups which cut across borders. So in Togo, there are some Evers there. And in Ghana, there are some Evers here. These are the close boundaries between the two. Because the Evers and the, the Evers in Volta region are here. And they have Evers in Togo. So that's to the east. And when you go to the west, there are um, people called Enzimas. There are Enzimas in the west here in Ghana. And then Enzimas when you cross over to um, Cote d'Ivoire. And if you go to the north, there are Dagombes who are in Ghana and there are Dagombes who are in the north. But when you come within the country, they are different. Mostly Akan. They really can't communicate no. with each wow. other. No. So even here in Ghana, there are some places if I travel, I wouldn't be able to communicate very well. Yes. Especially if I go to the Volta region, I don't speak much Volta, I don't speak much Ewe language. So it's hard. The common language that we can speak is English. Unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that is what is taught throughout school, all the way. So, yes. so what about what about us just creating a, 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 just one language for the continent? <laughs> like, a, <laughs> and we all and we all forced to learn it. I know some people. And all of the, the I know some, some yeah. people push the, the Kiswahili. Yeah, people. Uh, yeah, there are people who have actually advocated for Kiswahili and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's by going to be hard. Because we're allowed to push. West Africa is probably not trying to hear, trying to hear that, right? <laughs> yes. And you know, Kiswahili is mostly um, between east and then south. Yeah. yeah. You know. So you don't have any kind of something that we can read or yeah. to translate that in? I mean, over to that language? Is there any kind of... Uh, oh, well, the, the, they are, the languages, they are languages that are translated from English to the local language and vice versa. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. However, I believe it would be very detrimental and, and most beneficial to Africans to have a language that the entire is not impossible. Like it needs to be done, otherwise it will be our undoing. Mm. Yep. Like it already has been some periods. I agree with you. Other than English, right? Yes, you want to say something? But one good thing about everybody learning English, right? If, if, if the Africans didn't know English, they wouldn't be able to speak to talk to us in America. Yeah. So by them, European, no, it's, no, not a bad it's not a bad thing, but I'm just yeah. saying that because we all speak English yeah. now, we're all able to connect. Yes. But we have to take it further to learn different dialects. Yes. So, or to have one like, you know, yes. Kiswahili yes. or something like that. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yes. With all these uh, uh, kind of empty buildings, construction, I would assume that there's a big construction market out here. Yes. A lot of work, a lot of labor for construction. Yes. Like, is that true? It is true. Yes. It is true. Is there a lot of money in that? Um, for, for the real estate, there is a lot of money. But for, you know, here, those who work are actually craftsmen, individuals. Those who've actually established themselves would have workers work with them and so they get something. So it is very, very segmented. For me, here in Ghana, people build houses by themselves. A the majority of Ghanaians won't, won't go to a real estate person to get their house built. They built it from the scratch, buy the land, lay foundation, buy stones, rocks, blocks, um, iron rods, 
all the way to the roofing. Wow. And people built based on the level of income. So someone's dream house can take between five to 20 years to finish. Hey, yes. bro, it's yours when you finish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then when, when you finish, it's yours. It's not like America where you just, you know. When you finish, it's yours. Okay. yours. The only thing you would have to pay would be tax for the government for the property. But then it's yours. You don't have to pay rent to anybody. Is that yearly tax? Oh, yes, yearly taxes, yes. Yes. Yearly? Yes. Annually? Yes, annually. Okay. <laughs> give, give, us, give, give, us, give us the amount. Give us the amount yes. for the basic house. Give us the amount, yes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, minimum wage. Oh, yeah. So minimum wage. Uh, a day's minimum wage is now about um, eight CDs for a day. Eight CDs. Eight, 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 Yes, but then there are those who work like construction. Those you would you pay them upfront. Uh, yes, based on the level of service the person is giving you. But if you're working in an institution, you are paid at the end of the month. So wow, monthly payments. So, yeah, that's, so that's monthly payments. So if the basic, the lowest monthly payment would be about let's say uh, say between two hundred and three hundred CDs. Yeah, yeah, about 50 bucks, yes. Does that include Social Security? No. <laughs> there is no Social Security. There is no Social Security. No, it doesn't include that. What? They don't pay it, but do they have it? Yes, they are, they are, so they are institutions which are mandated to pay Social Security. Okay, good. So, yeah, we pay Social Security. And then how much would they get? So, that's the thing. So, at the, at the end, you're not able to save nothing. Because, for example, so let's use the minimum rent. Um, Mohammed was just telling me that there's a place, the minimum rent a person would pay for a, just a single room, compound house. Compound house means you're sharing the house with people. Probably you would have one bathroom and one washroom. The minimum probably you'd be paying would be like 85 CDs. Yes, a month. And so you pay your rent. You pay your utilities. The landlord will come and take utilities. You come and take your electricity bill and your water bill. If here in Ghana, you know, we give birth to about four, three going up. So let's say the, the, the minimum, let's say the person has four children. Okay, you have to pay school fees. Has to feed transportation. By the end of the month, he has nothing. He can't even save. So it's that's it's the challenge. So so mostly you would know those who, who actually get that are mostly in the rural areas. And then those who do many uh, miniature jobs like um, cleaning and stuff like that. But those who work for the government, especially those who um, um, of institutions and private institutions. The government um they mandates everybody to pay contribute to the SNET, it's called the SNET. Social Security National In uh, Insurance Trust. It's called the SNET. Where you pay. And so um, you pay it and when you go on retirement you can have something to live on. Oh. But it is very, very small. Very, very small. So most people when they retire you know, you know the job they go back to? They go back to farming. They go back to their hometowns, their villages, and then they farm. 
and then they can feed their own selves, go where they, go where they want to eat and feed themselves. Yeah. So that is what it is, yes. Explain security, like from what I'm seeing, um, it would be like if you have a family or if you're a single woman, it would be ideal to, to live in a place that has, again, I'm just being naive, to live in a place that has like barbed wire, maybe even like a, uh, a, a, a security gate with a security guard, you know, on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, um, on the compound on the premises. I mean, is, is there any validity to that? It, 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 is, it, is it less safe and, and you know, where we, we just came from? Let's say because you don't have barbed wires and that kind of thing. So can you explain that? So you know, security is a matter of everybody needs to be very secure, and you need to, in a way, protect yourself everywhere in the world. And compared to, compared to to the US, the Europe, and all that, where you have random crimes. It's not as much random as it is. But yes, there are threats. So people build homes and have high walls because they are well to do. And so when you when you live in that community, you know that you are prone to robbery. Those who live downtown in we will say the lower class, they don't have high walls. And each other is each other's keeper. And so the crime rates there, uh, kind of stealing, stealing and stuff like that is very low. Yes. And so it's that's how the thing is. But then Ghana is relative, um, it's very, very relatively um, a very peaceful country. Um, the crime rate is not as high as you have it in, in the States and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. It's very low, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So this highway we're actually driving on, it's funny, it has a very funny name that you wouldn't like. It's, it. it's not with a B, it's not with a B, <laughs> GB, GB Highway? Is it, is, it, is it GB Highway? <laughs> it's called the George Walker Bush Highway. Oh, 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 oh no, so I don't think y'all are not going to like it. Wow. <laughs> I want you. Oh, 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 oh. George W. George W. George yes, George W. W. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So, you know, when Bush was in power, um, at that time, too, Ghana had number had 43. A new, had a new government <laughs> at that time. This is one of the highways that connects all the way to um, our industrial harbor city called Tema. And it's a very major highway. It's called the N1. N1? Yes, N1. And it goes all the way, you can go, you travel on the way, you go all the way to Togo, and this way, you're going west, you go all the way to La Côte d'Ivoire. And so traffic here was terrible. At that time, Ghana was, was in what we call the highly indebted poor country, Hippic. So between 2004, it was terrible. We couldn't buy it out, by now would it be here? So um, there was what's called the Millennium Challenge Account that was given to um, developing countries. So Ghana was able to access this funds. And so we were able to build and construct this road. So anytime I drive people here, I want to say thank you to you, to you, and to your family back at home because it's your taxpayers' money yes. that helped yes. us. Do this. George so not, w. not yeah, Bush. So not Bush. So to you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, that's politics. You have to do with it. So. Yeah, you will say politics. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, is, is there any concern for the Chinese infiltration in Ghana? I know other Good question. countries are, I mean, they're just creeping like the um, roaches everywhere, like the teenage roaches. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, there is a major concern, especially oh, from yeah. the citizens. Oh. But you know, Ghana again is developing and we need certain amenities. And so the government goes to places where they would get support. Yes. 
Uh huh. So, Am I selling your soul? <laughs> <laughs> and so. Of course. Yes. Loans in place. So the government. So there was an interview on the news, and um, you know, recently the government. Uh, or the China, the Chinese are actually giving a huge sum of more money to the African continent. No, 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 no. There's a trick. Yes, loan. Yes, yes, loan. Yes. So the, the 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 government was able to access some amount of money, and um, on the news. So the the interviewer was asking a government official. Uh, do they know what the Chinese have done to other countries? Yes. That, and then the official was said, yes, we know, and so we are going in very strategically. So, and so, so they say all the good things, but we hope to see. That's the, that's the definition then, of politics. But then, this is the thing. Um, the previous government, um, there was a very big challenge. The Chinese were, seriously, it was, they were like messing the country up, especially our mining industry. So, in places where we have gold mines, uh, especially in the west and in the Asante regions where we have large gold mines, the, the Chinese come in as tourists and then they disappear into the rural areas and then they, they bring in the big machines and then they start mining. And they're mining right where the community, the streams and the rivers and the water that supplies to the people livelihood farming and all that i know here gold the way we, we mine our gold you need to wash the gold there are those that are mined underground there are those that you can find gold around rivers so here ghana indeed is called gold coast we still have gold and so they come in and then they wash the thing in in the rivers and so it's polluted it's terrible when we coming from kumase to the Asante region, we will pass one of the one of the major um, rivers, and you see the color of it. So the government had to put a tax force together and start deporting them. Yeah. And this kind, this government also came in. Wow. Yes, they yes. Also yes. Start yes. deporting them. Yes, the port and bomber class. So they are. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is our thing. That is our thing. That is our thing. And there are those who are actually working, do other stuff, and then the way they treat got the local people and then goes all the are people there was there was this Lebanese um, restaurant and the way it um, treated this local uh, person staff there I had to put their hand in a blender yeah and so he's he's in prison yeah. So yeah, so they are they are those who are coming into the country doing um, illegal businesses and treating the people bad. Yeah. And so um, yeah, the government was actually also pushing that all these people will be tried and jailed. You know, when it comes to uh, citizens from other countries, you know, all this international thing that has to come in. Yeah. So yeah. Question. Okay. How can we get a meeting with the president with all our concerns? <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Probably when we come the next time. <laughs> and keep on coming when we try and see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 